Yeah. Yeah. We are here with another get in the room interview. This one, folks, I had to do a little arm twisting to get this one here today. So this is Drea and Drea is the, uh, the pro behind my YouTube videos behind my photos that you see on Instagram and everywhere else. And I think Dre is just so amazing. So I wanted to chit chat with her about her career and just what it's like to be a, a woman in a man's world, making money and doing all the things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is as a camera operator or a content producer and being a woman, <laughs> I'm like a rarity. Like when I walk in a room, they're always like looking at the guy that's next to me or whoever's my assistant is usually like a male. If it's not Michael, my husband, then it's like someone else that I'm hiring. Usually it's a guy. And it's, it's so strange because they'll, they'll immediately talk to him and then they'll slowly start realizing like, Oh, she's the one with the knowledge, <laughs> you know? So right. it's strange. It's strange being in a male dominated industry for sure. Isn't that crazy? Like even, even if it's not male dominated, they still turn to the male. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I work in fashion and I'll just never forget my first instance where they thought I was the assistant. I'm like, everyone in like most people in fashion are women. And still, if a man's in the room, you're like, he must be in charge. What is that about? It's so strange. I, I actually, yeah, I went to um, I went to Nepal like two years ago, and I was filming a documentary out there, um, and also doing other like hiking around Mount Everest or whatever. But uh, I went to do a documentary about women's empowerment out there, and I had to stay at this host family. And I remember Michael and I walking in there. And the dad didn't want to talk to me, like started talking to him, didn't even like acknowledge me, like, you know, because women in Nepal, it's like a different thing. That's why I was out there. Um, but he didn't want to talk to me and then slowly started realizing that Michael was like carrying my things. <laughs> <laughs> and then he started giving me respect, like letting me sit at the table with him and then having a conversation. But initially it was like, I was, you know, like whatever, like I didn't even exist. And that's, you know, from Nepal all the way to the States and wherever, like it's always, always like that. <laughs> Not quite as harsh, but. Right. <laughs> so something interesting that I would like to just learn more about from my own curiosity. So obviously with me, like being in fashion and I'm always teaching women to, you know, dress your best look your best so you can get into the room. But something that I've noticed in the like production side of things, camera, you know, people, directors, like they usually look like pretty crusty. And <laughs> while I still have found with clients that work in that industry, that it's important to still look like you're an authority figure. But I also sense that there's some bias in terms if you're like too pretty because you're like sound like from mean girls you're like really pretty but you are you're like really no. <laughs> do you think that has been um helpful or hurtful in the industry that you're in okay so definitely as a woman and then as a a, a younger attractive woman, I guess, whatever. Yeah, um, own it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you have to prove yourself more. You have to prove yourself more because they're gonna look at your face and then not take you seriously. So for in my experience, like walking in there, they don't, they think that I'm like, they think I'm immediately like not good at my job, you know? Right. Um, and then they slowly realize that the proof is in the work. And that's what you have to kind of just like, you know, prove yourself that way. Also, as far as like dressing, yeah, we kind of dress down a lot, you know, but ever since I met you, <laughs> I've like up my blazer game. Like I'm wearing a blazer. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> this is getting to me now. <laughs> and but just like 
by the way, Drea and I have so much fun. Like when we're working and she's shooting like a YouTube video or one of my courses, it's like the most fun thing ever. Like we're laughing, we're learning. And I love it when anyone who works for Team LM, like my fashionness, like just kind of creeps in on people. <laughs> You can't help it because like I'm listening to him like, you know what? That's so true. Like I should wear a blazer. Like I should walk in there and like, you know, look like I own this thing. <laughs> like, I can't help it. Right. But I think, you know, and I think that's something interesting to note because of, you know, being younger, being, you know, traditionally more beautiful, <laughs> you know, like you I'm not there yet. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, there are these like, not to say, I think everybody's beautiful. And I know that sounds like bullshit, but I do. I think everybody's beautiful. I think everyone has the potential to be beautiful, but there's certain qualities that are, you know, accepted as like, you're beautiful, you're not so beautiful. So I think if you have that like traditional look, there are associations made with that. Like, you're not as smart, like, oh, cool. She's right. just a pretty face. She must be just breaking into this. The guy next to her, who's actually her assistant must be her boss. Then you can layer on those authority pieces to be like, yeah, bitch, I'm pretty, but I'm also smart. And I'm about to rock this whole motherfucking operation. It's so true. It's funny. I, wor I worked for this one company and I remember the guys in there, they hired me because I have uh, I have a lot I had a lot more experience than everybody in that department, and I remember the guys in there was like, when I first started, they said, you know, the only reason why we hired you is because you're you're a hot Asian girl. Can you believe that they said that to me? They said that to me over and over again that I wanted to prove myself so hard. I worked my ass off and I became one of the top producers in that company. It was so insulting to hear that over and over again. First of all hot Asian girl. That's the only reason why they hired me. Not because I'm like way more experienced than all of you. It was insulting, you know? And like, I just remember just being like, you got to work a lot harder to be a woman, you know, you and got a lot harder. You got to prove yourself more. <laughs> so what do you think it is? Cause I, this is interesting to me because I've, you know, had comments similar of like, oh, it's because you're this, it's because you're this way. And you know, it's like, well, cause I'm freaking smarter. And a lot of reactions for most people, and it's a, a just reaction is to be like, uh, double middle, middle fingers, I'm out of here. What made you stay even with that treatment? Cause I've stayed through things like that too. And I have my own reasons, but I'd like to hear yours. I mean, I, I stayed at that job because a, I needed the money. I was getting married, <laughs> you know? So I was just like, I just got to stick it through and B because I wanted to prove myself. Like before I left there, I wanted to show them that the clients that were coming into their company were going to request me. And at the end of the day, that's what was happening. All of them wanted to work with me because a, I have a good personality. B I'm badass at my job. I'm good at my job. And I'll, and if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to learn it. You right. Know? whatever I can. And I'm, I'll work twice, three times as harder than any of them. And they all saw that. So at the end of my reign <laughs> there, <laughs> I was like, every, every one of their clients were requesting me, you know, majority of them, people that had worked with me, they were like, I want to work with Drea. Yeah. Um, so I felt good, you know, like I felt good because I had proven myself and I couldn't, I just could not stand hearing that over and over again. Like it was just so insulting. You're just here because you're a hot Asian girl. I'm like, that's not true at all. Right. You know? So stuff I, like I, that makes me so angry. And so that, mad. I know. And that's part of what I want to break through in the get in the room challenge that I'm launching on July 20th. Tell all of your friends registration opens Monday. Uh, but the notion of, having your eye on the prize towards the bigger, the bigger goal. And then even past that goal, there's a bigger goal and it allows you to take, take your lumps. There are lumps that are 
bullshit. Like this stuff shouldn't happen ever. Like no one should say that, oh, it's because you're a hot Asian. And, you know, I posted a video the other day um, doing my little commentary on the documentary, Knock Down the House, which you pulled that clip for me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> about how women have to think so much more about how they present themselves, how they walk, what they wear, how they, you know, all of it. And it's yep. bullshit. And people are like, well, why would you keep pushing that agenda of dressing the part and doing this? It's because we have to get into the space. We have to get into the room where we can say, we're not standing for that shit anymore. So, you know, for me as a business owner, I hire whoever I want because they're qualified, women, men, minorities. We don't have a dress code. I work in a fashion company. We don't have a dress code. I don't judge you on your appearance. And my job is to become more successful as a businesswoman based on everything I've learned being in those bullshit scenarios so I can create something where that doesn't happen. And I feel like that's something that you're doing as well because now you're doing your own thing. You have your own clients and you're like rocking it. Hell yeah. I mean, I left that place for a lot of reasons, <laughs> but uh, I just, it's so much, I, I, I can make an impact now. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like before I was working for somebody else and yes, like I was, I was able to influence those people, but now it's like, I get to hire my own people. I get to do my own thing. And eventually my dream and goal is to have a bigger company where people work underneath me and I want to hire badass people, you know? And again, without, you know, like I'm going to hire that person because they're a hot ass, you know what I mean? Like, no, I'm going to hire you because you're qualified and you're good at it, you know? And, uh, probably, you know, help other women. You know, I really am an advocate of helping other women to kind of just empower themselves. If I can find a woman that I can train underneath me, like that's what I'm about. That's why I do that's why I did that documentary out there in Nepal because I wanted to get the stories out of those women that had gone through those massive, I mean, they went through a different kind of adversity, but that's why I was out there because the stories are, you know, rampant throughout the world in different levels. Us here, like me and you, it's like our careers, you know? Yeah. So it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's, hard. it's just so interesting because, you know, you hear these, these stories and I reposted um, an article on my Facebook page um, just about, you know, the like casual racism in Hollywood. And it's just, it's everywhere. It happens everywhere on every level. There's too many stories to tell, you know, for me, for you. But when you get into this position where you do have a little like autonomy and you do have a little power, you can speak up about it because there's a whole bunch of people that don't have any idea <laughs> something no. like that's occurring, or they don't even know that it's something that could be talked about because it does unfortunately become so normalized, even as someone experiencing it. You're like, oh, well, well, someone's a normal. Job again. <laughs> just, just part of the load I carry to get my job done. It's so, it's just, it's it people don't experience all of this all the time you know like sometimes you know like they don't think that they it exists because they're not experiencing it so it's you know having no. you talk about it or me talk about it or other women talk about it helps the women that go well i guess it's just me it's not it's not just you right it's, it's absolutely not <laughs> you know and then for the people that don't experience it, they're finally hearing that it exists. It's not this made up thing, you know, like it's it's the reality of the situation. We haven't progressed uh, where we need to be right now in 2020. Look at us, you know? I Look at us. I mean, I have been like, can I Google like a ticket off of the planet? <laughs> like, is there somewhere else I can set up shop? Because to me, what drives me crazy, just aside from just all of it, um, but like the gaslighting that we experience of like, <laughs> stop trying to make me sound crazy. That's why I love talking about this. And I love bringing in other women who have experienced it, can talk about it and have succeeded and found, you know, found a new, um, gotten to the other side. 
But I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> it exists. It's real. <laughs> it's not this made up fairy tale. Just because you're not experiencing, experiencing it doesn't mean that no one else is experiencing it. <laughs> you know? Right. So, so where, so tell, take us on your journey. Um, how many like normal jobs did you have until you broke through to doing your own thing? And what did that decision making process look like? So I've always kind of had this entrepreneurial spirit since I was like a kid. So I remember, first of all, I'm like this anomaly or really anybody from LA is like, we always do a bunch of different things. So I have, I have worked in front and behind the camera. So I moved to LA here like 2008. <laughs> and I came here because I wanted to be in the industry. I love doing photography and I also was in front of the camera. So it was like the perfect place and it was warm and it wasn't freezing like it was in New York because that's where I'm originally from, New York, New Jersey. Ah. So I came out here, I was trying to do my thing and I, I needed to survive. So I started, you know, really learning my craft and, uh, getting more into my like photography, videography, and starting with events, working for other people as a freelancer and kind of sinking my teeth in it. And again, male dominated industry. I was doing events and I was working for other men and they would treat me a certain way or they would say, oh, I want you to work this event because there's gonna be a lot of guys there, like things like that. Like I would hear that all the time. I couldn't stand it, you know? And so um, eventually, uh, I just, you know, I worked for, I worked for like different, I don't know if I can say, I worked for different, like, like the one, like I've shot stuff for like views. I've shot um, like different, I started kind of moving into like the industry shooting of things and outside of that, of events or coinciding together. <laughs> and then, uh, and then eventually I started working for a marketing company and that's where I learned a lot, but that's where I kind of experienced a lot of that um, harassment. I experienced a lot of, you know, those sexism kind of comments. And throughout that whole time, because it's been like 10 years, right? No, 11 years that I've been, I've been here and kind of trying to do my own thing. I decided that I was gonna kind of just work for myself. I kind of have been doing that the entire time, but I, I was after that, that whole experience, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm quitting that job. I'm, uh, I'm leaving that job. I had to leave that job and, uh, and just kind of sink my teeth into just doing my own thing. Yeah. You know? And, uh, that's been really, really great for me. I met Daniel, uh, Shamtab, who he introduced me to you, which I'm like so grateful for because I, I remember meeting you for the first time being like, I love this person. Like, this is the type of woman that I want to be around. She's like powerful. Um, and it was during that whole situation with that former job that I just needed people like that around inspiration entrepreneurs that could, you know, that were badass and reminded me that I could do what I had done before and, you know, remind me of the strength that I had. Yeah. So that's yeah. like, that's kind of been my journey. I kind of was just, being passed around. I've worked with different companies. Like people just hire me for, you know, I'm like that traditional LA photographer, videographer person that they're like, Hey, do this job for me. Okay. I show up, you know? And, um, right. I did, I did that one job for two years and that's, I, I don't know if I won't be able to do that. Again. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do that experience ever again. Cause that was like pretty traumatic. <laughs> what, what advice would you give to women who are finding themselves in that position where they're working for someone else, they're working in a toxic work environment and they're trying to, to get through that, what advice would you give them? And it could be like, get the frick out of there. Maybe you should have gotten out sooner. Like what, what could, uh, advice could you offer them? I mean, for me, I was pushed out of there really. Um, because I, I, I loved working with, with the clients. That's why I stay there. I loved working with their clients. You know, I loved being able to work in like a big team environment and have, you know, the resources and stuff, but the toxic work environment and that, no, like I should have left there earlier. You know, I should have left because I could have, I could have been where I am now way faster, way faster. So 
my advice is to a always stand up for yourself. I stood up for myself by the end of that um, situation, and you know, it's great. <laughs> I feel so good. I was able to stand up for other women in that that company. I was able to stand up for myself. Um, but uh, you know, if you're going through that same situation, if you're going through a toxic situation, you just need to leave it because it's just not it's not conducive to what you're trying to do. At the end of the day, you just have to think about your bigger goals. If it's going to work at another more positive situation or work for yourself, you can do it. You know, there there are resources, there are other people that you can like follow, surround yourself with good um, inspirational people. I, you know, like it's not. To kind of immerse yourself in that is just like not good. It took me a while to like yeah. kind of get my brain. It's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I think it's kind of a no, you know, at least in my experience, it's know why you're there, know when you've gotten what you needed to get and get out. Exactly. Work like, what you need to do and leave. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. And yeah, you know, I think, you know, it's a matter of, you know, when I talk about getting in the room, it's, you know, getting in that in that position of power or getting into that space that's going to help advance you and your dreams. Um, but once you get in, what are you going to do once you're in there, you know, and, and how and how long are you going to stay there and getting the courage and the confidence to be able to use your voice? And I've been in rooms for way too long. And I got in the space and I got the power and I got the money and still lingering too long and getting accustomed to the comments and the gaslighting and the abuse and then finding the strength to be like, no. I mean, even just the other day, <laughs> And I'll tell the full story in the challenge. I'm not going to tell, tell it all here. But like, I'm in this situation where I know that I'm brilliant. I know that I'm smart. I know that I'm coming with straight up facts. And then you're called emotional. And you're like, you know what? No. <laughs> like, this is the opportunity to speak your truth and exit. Because you got in the room. You got what you needed. I got what I needed years ago. And get out. And then use your voice to elevate, to talk about it, and to make sure that an environment like that never exists again, you know? Yep, yep. I mean, that's, for me, that's what I had to do. Like, I left that company making an impact. <laughs> I can't go into the, like, details of it, but I, ca I came out of the company making an impact, and that company is never the same ever again because I was... I decided to speak my voice. I decided to stand up for myself and stand up for the other women in there because what they were doing was wrong, yeah. you know? And like being in a toxic environment like that, being in a place where women and, um, you know, those men were really <laughs> taking advantage of us, um, it's not It's not okay, you know? And, and you gotta, <laughs> I don't know if every situation is gonna be like my situation, but if you feel like it's a, it's a bad place, you, you have to speak up for yourself. You either speak up for yourself, say something, or get out of there. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Take what you, like what you had just said, Lauren, which is get what you need, learn what you need to do, and get out of there, use that experience, and then be a badass somewhere else. Right? And that's what was so impressive. You know, we can't go into details of, of your situation, but when you told me about, you know, what you had gone through, I was like, my respect for you, I mean, I already had like tremendous respect for you and I always think you're just the most awesome human ever. And then once I heard about that, I was like, fuck yes, girl, yes. Because it was that instance of, you know, in that moment, that was your purpose, like to that be in the room, to swallow that shit and then to speak up for everybody else that was afraid to. And like you said, that environment will never be the same again. It will never be the same. It will never be the same. And that, it's you know, and, and that's that's what I think about when it's like finding that balance. You know, I think about all of our favorite female heroes, modern day heroes, you know, historical heroes, and it's that determining that breaking point when it's like now's the time. Yep. 
Like yeah. I've been quiet. I've been polite long enough. I learned I'm what I needed to do. I researched the enemy. <laughs> I'm like, now it's time to strike. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I just remember just having my breaking point there and just being like, I've had enough. <laughs> like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. It's, my wedding's over. Like, I could just got to fight now. Now I have to fight. Now I have to say something. What do you think? What do you think gave you the confidence and the courage to do that? Like, what do you think all of the elements were? Like, obviously the breaking point is coupled with, you know, a certain degree of strength in this toolkit of things that it's like, I freaking got this. It's the difference between just like shooting from the hip emotionally as, you know, <laughs> people like to call us and being like, I'm ready for battle. Yeah, it's funny because you know, if you're upset about it, you're emotional. If you stand up for yourself, you're a bitch. That's, that's who we are, right? As women, we can't be strong. Like it's like different if it's men and it's, oh, they're so strong or they're so, you know, it's not the same for some reason. Like, why is that? You know? And it's definitely, <laughs> I had to just be like, yeah, that's right. I am a bitch. Like, <laughs> no, fine. Um, but to answer your question, what gave me the strength I mean, it was hard. <laughs> that whole situation is hard. Um, and it was definitely emotional. Like, I, it was so hard to just, like, keep myself together. But the one thing that I kept, like, thinking about was, how the heck am I supposed to finish this documentary about women's empowerment in Nepal if I don't stand up for my myself? Mm. You know, how do I continue my career doing stuff that I believe in about women standing up for themselves? Because that's primarily, like, kind of the direction I want to go with like my documentary filmmaking, like doing, uh, like helping tell stories about underserved communities. How do I do that if I don't stand up and have my own voice? And that's what I kept like kind of trying to remind myself in like the midst of all of that. Like I kept having to be like, no, I have to, because like I, I wouldn't be able to consciously just keep editing this thing or ask these questions and then and then not be able to speak up for my own people that I care, like that are really close to me and that are my friends and people that I consider like family, no freaking way. And so it was just, that was probably my number one thing. And then two, I've, I mean, I, I've had a history of this as a kid, you know, like I was harassed and like, um, I come from like a really, really, really like my childhood was very, very crazy. Like I, I had like abusive, an abusive mom. I was emotionally, physically, and sexually abused as a child. Like it was like, when you look back on your life, like why you're here, that moment was probably <laughs> like the most, you know, like powerful moment in my life where I'm like, you got to do this because of that, because of all of that, not just your current situation, not because, not just because of this documentary, but because you had gone through that. And if I don't speak up for myself now, this stuff is going to continue, not just to me, but to other people. Like I got to do something, you know? Yeah. So it was important. <laughs> so those are like, just like the background of everything. Like I had to, there was no other option. I could, I probably couldn't live with myself just like having to swallow that again, you know, as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. It's using your pain as a source of power, yeah. you know, yeah. which I think, is really important. And, you know, the challenge that I'm launching, I didn't plan on doing that challenge. You know, we had a whole photo shoot planned. Yeah, I talked to Drea about this. We had this because I was going to launch the Love Your Body Style Challenge for the fourth year in a row. And me and Drea had like the most fun photo shoot concepts ever for the challenge. Like, you still should do it just because. I know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the I'll do that challenge some other time this year, but we had like the best ideas and just silly props and it was going to be so much fun. And then everything happened with George Floyd. And I remember texting Drea and saying, I can't talk about for good feeling confident in a bikini. Like I can't talk about cellulite right now because <laughs> I'm in pain the world is in pain and it made me angry. <laughs> like it made me pissed and it forced me to look around and see that I've managed to elevate myself into a position that 
most people that look like me don't find themselves in. I'm a black woman who owns two businesses. I own a seven figure business. I own a multi six figure business. I'm president of entrepreneurs organization, LA chapter. Like these aren't things that black women in America typically get a chance to do. And I looked around and was like, how did I get into this space? And how can I empower others to do the same? Because like you said, I couldn't live with myself seeing, you know, black people getting murdered in the street, seeing racism just running freaking rampant. Do you know how angry I get when I innocently look at a Facebook article where like, you're like, okay, the article, this is like obvious. There's no room for interpretation. What has occurred here is terrible. And then you read the comments of all of these people that are like, well, they shouldn't have been there. They shouldn't have been doing that. Well, yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, like it's 2020. What it's the insane. hell? It's and then, insane. And just if nothing's going to change, if women like us who have gone through some shit, who have experienced some success, open our mouths, say something and create a space to bring other women along so these fools can so they can stop making the rules <laughs> you know so like that pain for me was like okay uh that photo shoot's canceled we're doing something different now because it's insane to me yep yep it's true because it's like you gotta use you gotta use your pain for something constructive <laughs> You know, and I think what you're doing right now is really, really important. And I think it's re relevant and it needs to be talked about. It needs, we need to do something, you know, like we need to change it up, you know? And if it's right. like, when I got that text from you, I was like, yeah, I totally agree. Cause it's too much. There was just too much going on. Like how, how do we talk about that stuff? We need to do something else. Like if it's, you know, like, I feel like this, this particular, uh, thing that you're doing right now is going to empower other women to speak up, you know, speak up from this for themselves in whatever situation that they're going through. It's important, you know, because you have that uh, influence right now and you have that power to do that and to kind of impart that on everyone that signs up for this challenge. That's, that's pretty awesome because they're going to go out there and then do the same thing. And, and uh, it's needed. I just can't believe that everything is going on right now. I just cannot like every time it's the same thing. I open up the articles on Facebook. Or something. <laughs> oh my God. People are crazy. They're crazy. Are crazy. What is, what is happening right now? I just cannot believe that people that, it, that we're still going through this right now. In I, know. I just can't like, cause you live in LA, you have your group of friends or the people that you surround yourself with. And usually you just don't think that that stuff exists. And it does. And it it's, does. Ugly. it's ugly. It's it ugly, is ugly world, you know, and I just can't, I can't believe it. It actually like hurts. You know? <laughs> right. It, no, it, it's, it's painful. And like, and I, and I don't want to get it twisted. Like I don't want anyone watching this interview to think that like Lauren's telling us to like get abused and like deal with shit. But what I'm saying is get, is get in the space where you can make a change, you know, instead of, you know, saying like, let's say Drea went to all of these different interviews and they were like, oh, whatever, hot Asian, can't, you know, like stupid girl, but for her to put on the stupid blazer and know like, okay, I got to do, I got to pull some lever for them to take me seriously. Okay. I got in and she already knows in her head, I'm eight times smarter than these fools. But because of this bias, sexism, racism, she has to work 10 times harder. And she said, you know what? I'll do that. I'll do that because I'm going to make it known. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to get my connections. I'm going to get my education from this job. And then when she really is in, she's in, she's working hard. She's getting client requests. And when this sexist bullshit still happens, she's like, nah, -uh. I'm in the room. I'm not someone bitching from the outside is like, oh, I heard they treat people like shit at that company. She's like, no, I'm here. 
They're treating me like garbage. They're treating her, her, her like garbage. I'm doing something about it. You know, it's like for me to get into a room with an organization, which I love the organization, but there's, uh, it's a male, white male dominated organization. So I have the opportunity to be like, huh, I'm in here. I had to work extra hard to get the revenue. I had to, you know, dress the part to, to be accepted in this club. And now that I'm in the club, I can say, you know what? I want more women in the club. I want more people of color in the club. I want us talking about these things instead of pretending they don't exist. That's what getting in the room means. It doesn't mean that people in that group were racist towards me and I just sat there and took it because, oh, thank you, I'm in the room. Nah, G, I'm in here and I wanna make sure that this is a welcome room for everybody by the time I'm done here. So that's what I want everybody to understand that it's not, it's playing the game strategically so we can own the game board, so we can redesign that thing. Yep, and make an influence. And, and then, you know, putting on that blazer isn't just about putting on that blazer. It's about feeling feeling powerful, you know? It's like, I got that blazer game going, you know? And I'm like, all right, which blazer am I gonna use? Like, this is my power blazer, you know? And knowing that that's the confidence I'm bringing in there, just to know that like, no, like you're not allowed to say that to me because I'm way more experienced than you. I'm a badass, like I'm a badass, you know? And like just knowing that and just walking in there because it's it's not about a piece of clothing, it's about how you feel in that clothing, how how you walk in there. And uh, I think it was like Meryl Streep that says it. It's about how you walk in the room and how you make everyone else move in that room. You know, it's not about, you know, like you just walking in there, but it's like the way people will look at you and the way you make other people feel because of the way that you dress because of the way that you're confidently walking in there and just knowing your shit, you know your shit. You, don't, you just have to like make sure that whatever their thoughts are, just don't let it penetrate, you know? Like, you know, cause you already have that blazer on. <laughs> yes, I have to like physically hold back my like, mm, yes, that yeah. right. So I'm like, can't mess up the sound clip, but. <laughs> I have, I have taught you well. You being in all of those hours and hours of footage of her shooting courses, she's got my, it. Right? Michael's even there like, oh, God, I, I need, like, to get things. Like, I got to get new clothes. Like, this is bad. <laughs> when you're around Lauren, you just can't, you can't help but to let it, like, sink in. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just covertly shove, shove it in. There's no judgment. It's just, it just penetrates. That's, that's power. That's style power. Well, thank you, Drea, so much. I know that you were like, um, I'm behind the camera. <laughs> I haven't been behind the camera in a while. <laughs> yeah, but no, this was fabulous and it's such an important story to tell. Um, so I thank you for being so open and sharing. Um, Drea is the best like photographer, videographer. She's so creative. She's so funny. Uh, so if you ever need some of that, she's your girl, but just don't take my spots. Okay. I still need, I still need her. <laughs> and then when does this documentary come out? Is it out? When is it coming out? It's not out yet. I'm actually looking for a translator, <laughs> a Nepali translator right now. So I've just been trying to reach out to different um, people that I can work with because we have to work remotely. And it's like, I, I can't, I, I know, like, I just need a translator. I need a Nepali translator. Anybody out there who speaks Nepali want to work with me? I was going to say, on. as many people, this will be on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. There's got to be somebody. So somebody. look at this. <laughs> Making those connections, getting in Drea's room. Cause it's, it's, it's full of female empowerment and we loves it. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you. Well, so much. Thank you. And tell Michael that I said, hello. I will. <laughs> I freaking, I love, I love me some Michael. He is hysterical. The two of them make help make video magic for, for Lauren Messiah. <laughs> All right. Until next time, uh, everyone have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Oh, we have some good interviews next week. Real good. If you thought all of these were good, 
Just you wait. I have uh, Chelsea Grayson, who's a former CEO of American Apparel and True Religion. And then I have my friend Aisha Faines, who is a brilliant, brilliant woman when it comes to using seduction as a power tool. So we will be chatting with them next week. Uh, can't wait to see you guys and have a great day.